You're listening to Love Talk Live with the relationship expert, Jamie Bronstein, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to Love Talk Live. I'm your host, Jamie Bronstein. And today I have with me Tyler Ornstein. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Wow, what an intro. That was a cool, cool little intro there. That was awesome. <gasps> I'm so happy you like it. Yeah, so normally the show is, is an in-person studio in Sherman Oaks, and it's it's great. It's, you know, it's very fresh and everything. But since March, we've been doing it on Zoom. So luckily, I'm still able to have the graphics and everything, even though it's on Zoom. I think it's cool. I, You know, as, as a business owner, you always have to stand out. And as Tyler's Coffee is like that, so whatever makes you stand out from the crowd, I think is awesome and you should definitely keep it up. Thanks, Tyler. Yeah. You know, we must be we must be related somewhere. I just wanted to point that out also. I feel like you're like my brother, because Ornstein, Bronstein. I know, I saw that. I saw that. I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. <laughs> We're reunited. Okay. So everybody, Tyler is amazing. He has a coffee company. We will relate all of this to relationships, because coffee relationships. It all goes together. So, cop, sorry, Tyler, not Tommy. Tyler started this company when you were sixteen-ish. Uh, fourteen, but who's counting? Okay. And now you're thirty, correct? I am. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit about Tyler and this company, and we're going to get into some questions. And here we go. So Tyler Ornstein loved the taste of coffee and the smell from his first sip at five years old but his father couldn't tolerate it because it upset his stomach. One day, Tyler asked him if he could make a coffee that both of them could drink. So Tyler's dad, Ian, a biochemist, tinkered quietly behind the scenes until he did what no university research lab or mega corporation could do. He created acid-free coffee that anyone can drink without digestive disruption. He created the world's first acid-free coffee that is actually healthy to drink. He designed a proprietary computerized Z roasting system and figured out how to roast the bean perfectly without letting the tannic and lipid acids form, which normally wreak havoc on those with GI problems from indigestion, bloating, and heartburn, or plagued by tooth enamel decay. Tyler, with a natural entrepreneur spirit, setting off door to door on his bicycle, that is very cute, to sell what soon became known as Tyler's Coffee. It was, it has since evolved into a full warehouse, a team 80% growth year over year with two, wow, that's, how many cups have you sold? Oh, way over a million. That's what I thought I saw. Oh my God, you go, man. You guys need to buy this coffee. Okay. So, and his distribution in a thousand independent grocery stores across the United States and was even the preferred coffee of the 2008 Academy Award. He has launched the product on Amazon and Walmart and as well as other retail store outlets. Um, his website is tylercoffee.com. We're going to go over that a few times. Um, and today he's here to tell us about this remarkable product and the journey of being an entrepreneur and retail pioneer from the age of 14. So Tyler. Yes. Can you tell us, tell us your, about your journey and what it's been like, what you've learned about being an entrepreneur at such a young age and now, and is there anything you'd like to inspire our viewers with today? Sure. Um, so, great intro. Um, I, I really can't add to that, but what I can say is that um, it's really important when an entrepreneur is looking to start a new company or a new product and what they're really needing to look for more than anything in the whole entire world. Market segment is a good idea. Figuring out your profit is a good idea. Figuring out your cost of goods is a good idea. But the most important thing is customer base. And so if you don't have a customer, then you don't have a company. And by making sure that you have a customer, you have to research and make sure that you can build a product that actually is gonna be wanted and desired in the, in the uh, industry that you're looking to expand into. Okay. And so you learned this all at starting at 14. Did you feel like you <laughs> popped out and you're like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> uh, well, 
I would say if I if I could go back and look at myself at 14 years old, I probably wouldn't be this polished. But yeah, I think I think it takes a, a very interesting character and a mindset to want to do something that's completely out of the norm and not normal business. Um, usually, entrepreneurs. I, so so they we call them faux preneurs, um, like fake preneurs. Um, and what that is is someone that gets into you know an MLM multi level marketing product company and they go oh I'm an entrepreneur no yeah. you're a reseller right it's um, not your product it's not your product it's not your invention it's not your idea most entrepreneurs like if you look at Elon Musk Steve Jobs Gates Buffett those people are all original right so they want to create it you know for example if you looked at Steve Jobs. He wanted to create the best computing experience in the whole entire world, and he wanted to bring that into the world. and And that's really what entrepreneurs are: is they they're they're fifty percent invention and fifty percent business. And uh, my father is an inventor, and he's a, he's an unbelievable inventor. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm the one that took the product at 14 years old, got on my bicycle, and started door to door, and, and actually just handing out sample bags of our coffee that we created. Um, and I'll never forget this very sweet lady, and she's the one that kind of gave me that light bulb moment. And she said, I mean, I called her up and I said, Hey, this is Tyler. I dropped off that coffee sample. Just wanted to see what you thought. She goes, Hey, you know what? It's actually really good. Did not hurt my stomach. Um, I liked it a lot. Where can I get some? And and that was kind of that light bulb moment of like, well, you can get it from me. And she's like, okay, well, how much is it? And I was like, a dollar. You know, like I, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but what I did realize at a very young age is that when you can help someone that already has a pre-existing condition and a problem, they're extremely excited to give you money. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's life changing. Yeah. Well, as you're talking, I'm thinking that, well, I was going to ask you, does it feel, I mean, I know when I help people, it feels good. So I'm guessing that part of your job is that you're oh, really changing people's lives. Sure. Sure. I love helping people. Yeah. I, I, before COVID, I would go around the country and I would speak on certain things and be interviewed. And, you know, they would think, wow, what a story, what an amazing idea, what an amazing person, what an amazing everything. And what it really boils down to is you got to look at the reality of the situation, and that is, can you help someone with a problem? And then, so at the end, when I get off stage, I have people that, you know, I don't want to sound egotistical here, but line up to talk to me because they're like 14 years old, has yeah. a multi million dollar company, wow, crazy smart guy and uh usually like when i sit down and talk to them i go okay what's your idea what's your concept okay cool and then i go okay well does it help and and it kind of sets them back and it goes well what do you mean and they go well you told me all the benefits of the product which is great but what does it help i mean I can I can sell you a product that's going to be the same product in the industry, and, and all we're going to talk about is price point. Because as long as I can get a lower price point and I can produce more volume, then I'll own market share. And, and that's not really something that I'm quote unquote interested in. I mean, it's a good model. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, people make millions of dollars on pennies, but you're all you're doing is you're just playing a price war, and it, it becomes kind of just you know, bland, bland, you know, it's just, so I, I like to, I like to be, uh, you know, on the cutting edge of technology and I, I like to, you know, be in disruptive technology and figure out how we can create a, a new product in a $1.6 trillion industry. It's just insane what the industry has really done. Um, yeah. Do you, do you love your own coffee? I drink it every day. I'm sold on it. Do you have decaf also? What's that? Do you have decaf also? Oh yeah. So the unique thing about our decaf is we use a Swiss water decaf process. And so it doesn't use any methane chloride and methane glycol. So it doesn't impregnate into the beans. And, and you know, people that are trying to stay healthy and clean and all that, they don't want to induce 
pretty much, you know, <laughs> fluids that are very hazardous. I mean, methylene chloride and methylene glycol is essentially coolant for your car. And, and that's what they use to decaffeinate. It's a chemical process, right? Well, we use a Swiss water decaf process. It's much more expensive, but we do it because it doesn't have those any uh, methane chloride, methane glycol traces. It's all natural water process. And then it goes through a zero sum process, which makes it acid free. And then it goes, you know, it's USDA certified. So we call it the trifecta. I'm gonna have to try this. I, my, it's not that I don't do caffeine. My body just doesn't do caffeine sure. against it. Sure. Um, and so I just, but I do like coffee, but yeah. I don't drink it because I know that coffee still has caffeine in it. Um, yeah. I mean, if you go on amazon.com, I mean, don't take my word for it. We have over 1500 reviews on our products. So. Oh, I'm going to try it. And I'm going to tell people to, to drink it also. And whoever's watching the show, drink the coffee. Yeah. Or the coffee. Yeah. Okay, so since we do need to talk about relationships, what's coming to me as a great question for you. I'm just yeah. very, very curious. Sure. You're this young guy, you're very successful. And as you're dating, I know you have a girlfriend now. As you're dating and you're younger, let's go back a little bit. What Did you ever feel like girls... Like, first of all, did they know that you were successful or did they not know? And, you know, kind of like when they're, you know, all the famous people, they're like, dude. Yeah, I kind of got, I kind of got the cat let out of the bag at a very young age where, um, you know, I, I started going and, and doing media at a very young age. At 16 years old, I went on live television. Uh, and and I'll, I'll tell you a really funny story. So I thought it was going to be taped, like a segment, tape segment. So I get there at like four in the morning and and the show starts at five and they're like, yeah, you're the first guest. And I was like, okay, so if I mess up, like what happens? <laughs> oh no, you're alive. <laughs> and, and so uh, it was a pretty interesting, you know, trial by fire situation. But ever since I got that, that media spot and then we got more media spots and, and so on and so forth. And, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out who Tyler Ornstein is. If you just Google, I'm everywhere. Um, but to the, to your question, I would say that it would be a 50, 50. Maybe I'd want that, you know, girl to know, or maybe I wouldn't, you know, it would just be in that certain circumstances. I, I would say that for the most part, I kept myself kind of humble until I found that you know, this girl was more interested in me than just my money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So did you find most of the time, like they're, they're just nice girls that just genuinely wanted to get to know you most of the time? Kind of. Okay. But not all the time. Yeah. So it, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting conversation to have and, and I don't have a problem talking about it. It's just, I can't really, I can't really put a, my, my finger on it. Plus, I'm, to be honest with you, like when I'm in a social search situation, unfortunately, my mind is thinking 10 steps ahead um, that I'm not, how do I say this? I'm kind of awkward around women. <laughs> um, I have a beautiful girlfriend. She's stunningly gorgeous and uh, I love her. Um, she actually works in my company and she didn't start that way, obviously, but over time I was like, you're really smart and I think that you would be a good fit. Um, but, but what the, the cool thing is, is that she saw me for who I was and not for my money or not for my fame. She, she actually was personally interested in me. So I found that really cool, you know, cause again, I, I, I kind of think in a level of like, not bro, let's go drink and get shit faced and then, you know, go hook up with some random strangers. Like that's just, that's not kind of who I am. And maybe you were too awkward to even think about that. <laughs> you said you're a little awkward with the girls. <laughs> you are. But, I mean, a lot, okay, let's put it this way. I have a lot of girls that my girlfriend thinks want to be with me, but I don't even know that. Like if I'm. So you're the best type of guy. You are the best type of guy because you're, you don't get it. 
I don't get it. <laughs> it sounds so like I'm thinking of like you know how we can improvise uh, um, you know a, a technology to vacuum seal our K cups for fre more freshness of quality. Not to mention I've got a lot of side projects and I'm I'm a car nut, so I spend ninety five percent of my free time researching cars and how to make them faster. So yeah, just. It's just not on your radar. So how did you and your girlfriend meet? How long have you guys been together? Uh, we've been together for nine years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is there yeah. I just, I, well, so there's, so there's this, okay. So I, I'll be, I'll be blunt here and I might catch some flack, but you know what? I'd rather be honest than not. Always be honest. I told her, I said, look, sweetie, you know, when you can equal your assets and your liabilities to me, I'll put a ring on it. And I didn't mean that in a disrespectful way. It's just, if you want to be with me, then the paper that we sign for you to have 50% of my assets, shouldn't be your number one priority. And she agrees. So that's what you're waiting for. Yeah. Okay. So you, you started dating when you were 21 years old. Yeah. Wow. And how old is she? Uh, well, she was 18. Wait, she was 18? She was 18, so now she's 27. Okay. 26. She's 26. Got it. Well, if and when there's an engagement, let me know. You guys can both come on the show together, which I always, regardless, I love having couples on my show, so you guys can, I can ask you that. Are you, are you married? Yes, I'm married. Okay. I've been married for six and a half years. Nice. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you. Um, and we have a little boy, Noah, who's in the other room. I'm hoping he doesn't interrupt because actually my husband's not home right now. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of, we're kind of on the same page as like, we don't want kids until we're like, you know, traveled the world and did a lot more things. And yeah. She, and I, you know, she's, she's a real go-getter. Like, that's what I like about Becca, you know, she's really on top of doing things and, and she's a sweetheart. And sometimes, so it's not always rose petals and, you know, right. dandy. I mean, sometimes we yell at each other and get mad at each other. Um, and it's obviously my fault, right? So. Of course. Always the guy's fault. <laughs> so I'm always the one that's apologizing. <laughs> Once again, you are a diamond in the rough. <laughs> girl. Okay. So you have a lot of experience being in a relationship and we will get back to the coffee in a it's few okay. minutes. Yeah, yeah. Love, love and relationships. As long as I have you here. You can so, talk about anything with me. I'm, I'm, I mean, to, well, I'll tell you. So here's the thing is another, another thing about me is I'm extremely blunt to the point of kind of rude. Well, people think I'm rude, but I'm like, no, I just want to get my point across. And so that everyone's on the same page. So if someone's like, well, what about this time? I say, um, we're not going to discuss that. Okay. <laughs> this question for you is going to be pretty benign. You've been in a relationship for a long time. What is What are some things that you would like to share with the viewers about what does it take to have a successful relationship? I would say communication is, is a number one factor in any relationship. Um, and trust. And unfortunately, I've um, I've broken trust before because I was being just a young kid and a boy, not a man. Mm -hmm. And and I had to kind of eat those circumstances, but it it taught me a lot, and it made me grow a lot. It made me a, a better man. Um, and, and I think a good relationship is someone that is going to always make you a better person. You know, it's like if, if you have a relationship and it's only geared towards the physical or it's only geared towards, um, you know, a feel good attitude or like, you know, just nothing that's really concrete, then you're kind of building a foundation that's going to fall. But if you're, if you guys, I mean, there's a lot of things that I don't like about Becca. Don't get me wrong. A lot of things, but it doesn't outweigh the good. Um, 
she's she's an amazing person and I love her to death and I really care about her. Sometimes I don't come across that way for her, but you know, sometimes I just have to learn. And, and same thing with her, I mean, she's not perfect. She, she makes mistakes and I tell her, hey, I don't feel comfortable about that. And so she's, she's understandable. It's again, again, it's communication. Well, I love that you just said, you mentioned perfect because I always say that it's not about finding the perfect person. It's about finding the right person for you. Right. Two people are right for each other, not necessarily right for other people. And no one is perfect. No relationship is perfect. Well, there's, there's always the grass is greener on the other side argument. And then when you get to the other side, you realize, wow, this is stupid. Okay. So one more thing about your relationship, because I feel like this could be really inspirational and helpful to the viewers. You mentioned that there was a trust issue and this happens all the time, every day, all day. It's happening. I mean, married, not married, it happens all the time. So you're human, it's normal. Not every couple bounces back. What was it about your relationship or what did you guys do or not do or, or what, what, what did you cultivate in the relationship? How did she regain your trust? Um, or you regained her trust in you? No, no, it was, it was the first one. Um, I, it was, it's, it's pretty simple. You build trust, okay? And it's like building your bank account. It takes a while for your savings to grow. Then you do something stupid and you decide to go take, a, you know, go buy a Ferrari on a credit card, you know, and you negative trust the bank account. The only way to build it back up is time. That's it. I don't think of, I mean, you can't fast track that. Yeah. Time heals. It does. It heals everything. Yeah. It's so true. And I feel like um, sometimes couples get impatient. Sometimes like the person in your situation might be like, come on, just trust me, trust me. But it sounds like you understood that it was going to take time and yeah. that's probably looked. Yeah, I mean, it, the thing is, is I, I, I told her, I was like, look, I'll be the first to tell you I screwed up. Just, I mean, that's what it is. And you she, it. she understood that and then she realized that. And I mean, we all have, we all have learning capabilities that we're, you know, if you're not learning, you're dead, is what I'd like to say. And so if you're not learning in your relationship and you're not learning in your business, then you're gonna get left behind. And it's it's important to make sure that you have a, a, a solid base. You know, you gotta have a solid base to grow off of. So I always say life happens for us, not to us. You know, these things that people feel like are the worst things in the world actually happen for us to learn and grow. Yeah. Oh, so absolutely. No question about that. Yeah, I agree. I love that you know that. And it sounds like you, in your own way, inspire people to do that as well. Right. right. Okay. So getting back to the coffee, what else would you like to share about your brand? Promote it and why it's special. I know it's acid free. How else has it changed people's lives? Why should people buy your coffee? And then also feel free to plug away your socials. So, great question. Why should someone buy Tyler's Acid Free Coffee? It's not cheap, it's very expensive. Um, but we like to say that we created the world's first and only acid free coffee, and we did. What that does is that doesn't give you heartburn, congestion, upset stomach. So, I can go into the science quite immensely with this because I've done this for such a long time, but I'll make it snapsed. Very, 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 very important fact. If your body does not stay in an alkaline state, it has an 80% chance of harboring cancer cells. Inflammation harbors cancer cells. Don't take my word for it, do your due diligence. By harboring cancer, by, by causing inflammation, not only are you harboring cancer cells, but you're also inducing bacteria and viruses to take over your body at a much higher rate because they love to thrive in an acidic and inflammatory state. 
by drinking Tyler's coffees in the morning, you're already ahead of the game. You're not inflamed. You don't have your liver working extra hard. You don't have your uh, pancreas or, or your bladder, uh, especially your stomach. So I have GERD, which essentially the sphincter on top of the stomach will not close because it doesn't have the correct enzymes. And so you get heartburn. Well, if you drink Tyler's coffees, doesn't cure GERD, but what it does is it doesn't give you the heartburn. Or if you drink normal coffee, it gives you that really bad heartburn and like esophageal issue. Okay, as you're speaking, I I have two for sure customers for you because my <laughs> friend I drink coffee and my husband is not as obsessed, but loves it and drinks way too much of it. So both of those people, I know they want to be healthier as healthy as possible so you have two for sure cu customers for the regular and i will try the decaf wonderful uh well and, and also a study was done by the crohn's and colitis foundation in north america in 2016 that was 50 million americans suffer from stomach related issues and it could be as little as heartburn to as, as severe as interstitial cystitis crohn's gerd leaky gut overactive bladder so on and so forth um yeah i was gonna say and us Jewish people, like Jewish people are known to have not good stomachs. I don't know if you knew that. It sucks. It's hard. It's the worst. I mean, we we get the real short end of the stick of like health problems. Like we're we're the top ones where it's like, oh the pollen, oh the dust, oh the fill in the blank because we're lucky. It's, it's probably because Jewish people are known to be warriors. We just worry, oy vey, you know. So and then the oy vey, exactly. stomach. Yeah, we're always worrying. We're always we're always thinking of the future, and we're always worrying. And I think it, it has to do with our past thousand year yeah. issues. But the work that I do, I'm breaking that cycle because I teach. I'm I live trying to be as present as possible. I teach being present. If you're in the past, it's depression, and if you're in the future, it's anxiety. Yeah. You've got to be present and peaceful. Drink Tyler's coffee, and life will be good, right? It's kind of funny. I, I, I used to I used to hate anxiety, and now I have to kind of feed off of it. But but anyway, um, okay, Tyler'sCoffees.com, Tyler'sCoffees.com, or you can search it on Amazon, Walmart.com, eBay, Jet, Wish. I mean, Bariatric, American Bariatric. I mean, it, it's we're we're in over five hundred stores across the country. Natural grocers, Heidi grocery stores. Um, if you go to our website, I know this is coming around Turkey Day. We don't know exactly when we're going to go on Black Friday sale, but we are going to go on Black Friday sale. So it's going to be like the lowest price Tyler's Coffees is for the whole year. Uh, and that's going to go from Black Friday to Cyber Monday. And we're doing that as a gift to all our customers for supporting us throughout this horrible situation of COVID and also this wonderful um, opportunity to, to help customers. And then uh, also uh, we're coming out with a 16 count K cup box instead of the 12 out 12 box. So if you go to our website, you'll see back ordered on the K cup. You can order it and it will go uh, through. And then when you do get your order, it's going to be a 16 count. So you're going to get extra for the same price. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really appreciate uh, everyone that has supported us. And I, and I, I say that to all my podcasts is, guys, Whoever's listening that's an entrepreneur or wants to become an entrepreneur, you have to do anything and everything. And I mean, bend over backwards, pick up the phone at two in the morning for your customer because you never know what that customer is going to do for you. Or on the other hand, if you give them a bad experience, the social media is a nightmare and it's very hard to get your reputation, your you know, respect back. Even though you try hard, uh, there's people out there that troll, uh, and 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 you got to be preventive about it. And that's what we do at Tyler's Coffees is we make sure that we, as a company, take care of the problem before it becomes an issue. And that's a great message and a great tactic, and speaks to why you guys are so successful. Thank you. And we're going to continue to be. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely.
Okay, so, and if anybody has any questions for me, as always, you can reach me at therelationshipexpert.com and join us every week on Love Talk Live on LA Talk Radio. And Tyler, it was a pleasure to meet you today and talk to you. Thank you for bearing with my viewers that wanted to hear about some relationship stuff. Um, I know that you're going to get new customers. It's good. Okay. Yeah, and anytime we want to talk about relationships, I'm here. And anytime, like I said, if you guys get engaged, come on the show. We'll hear all about it. Yeah. And the coffee, of course. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us today on Love Talk Live. Have a great night. <laughs>